So welcome everybody to the innovation forum around digital biomarkers. The first time at this very conference that digital biomarkers have their own track. I'm very pleased to see quite a packed room today. Um, we have a very great lineup of speakers brought uh, to Basel for you today. But before we go into those details, I really want to say happy birthday to the new digital biomarkers journal um, published by Carger, um, who really saw the opportunity there to drive this field forward and um, help really the community there to bring across all the players the field together. So thank you very much to Carger for launching the journal. Um, and without further ado now, I really want to go straight to the digital biomarker field. So, why digital overall? And there's still lots of confusion in the community. What is digital actually meaning? So there's digital media, um, you can do things with mobile technology. Um, but lots of these things that we see today as digital and where people feel like, well, digital is the new normal, Every, everybody is touching it. Um, lots of these things are actually just doing things slightly different that we already do today. And this is what, I, what you see here on the left-hand side is around optimizing in a digital way the efficiency. But what I want to touch base on today and really where the entire session is around is leveraging sensors that are now ubiquitous um, in our everyday world um, and how they enable us to do digital translational science. So why is, in particular, farmers so excited about it? And that is that for the first time ever, kind of, we have the opportunity to have objective, precise, and continuous measurements um, of symptoms in the real world. This is what I call here ecologically valid. So this is where it really matters, right? It doesn't really help you if you measure something in the clinic. You want to see how patients, how healthy people are living their lives outside of the clinic. Um, then you want to see how, how is the, the uh, disease uh, fluctuating if they have something or certain symptoms. Um, you want to catch up on treatments effects as early as you can. Um, and of course, you also want to reduce the burden that those participants in, for example, clinical trials or patients uh, participating in remote monitoring programs that they, are, that they are facing. And then where do we want to go in the future? So we really want to go beyond that. We want to identify patients in need of treatments, right? really kind of making digital biomarkers an established diagnostics tool. We also, of course, want then to look into what does it mean in the real world in terms of evidence. Um, can we capture treatment effects and can we help physicians to, uh, to make more informed decisions when they prescribe, for example, a certain compound and fine-tune um, the dosing? And last but not least, there is this huge opportunity that everybody, I guess, in this room here feels is, is just at the horizon and this is everything beyond the pill. So all these magic ideas that I think lots of you are going to have in the future and that we really want to get you uh, thinking about and that we really want to inspire you about with the talks that, you, that you're going to see later today. So let me really, with this, talk you through today's agenda. So we're going to have Ray kicking it off, and I'm going to introduce Ray in a second, talking about the importance of digital biomarkers for neurological disorders. And then we're going to have Sushi um, talking about measuring changes in disease status using machine learning. And then afterwards, we're going to have um, an extensive panel, and you can kind of keep lots of your questions also for then, um, where we really want to engage with you as an audience as lively as possible. And so let's come to our first speaker. So um, Professor Ray Dorsey is um, Professor of Neurology at Rochester Medical Center. Um, he's also the director of the Center for Health and Technology at that institute. Um, he actually did also some uh, management consulting early on in his career and did an MBA, but now he's really again focusing on patients as a practicing uh, physician where he investigates new treatments, uh, in particular um, on movement disorders. 
So recently, when he saw the opportunities coming with uh, telemedicine, for example, he leveraged himself already web-based video conferencing to engage better with his patient community so that they don't need to come to his office every time. Um, but I guess most of you know him for his engagement um, with Empower and in particular the Apple Research Kit, where he now uses this technology to learn more about his Parkinson's patients. So Ray, the floor is yours.